Hi, I'm Zoe Tant at stampingscene.blogspot.com. Thanks for popping by today, where I've got a tutorial to show you how to make these little boxes that you could use for Advent, for each Sunday of Advent, and you can either put chocolates in if you want to limit the amount your children have, or maybe you'd like to put little battery-operated tea lights in like I have to use them for each um, Advent Sunday and put one on as the weeks go by. Okay, so let's get started on making these advent calendar boxes. First of all, you need a piece of card that is 13 and a half centimetres by the full length of a sheet of A4. If you place it into your trimmer, you want to first of all score it at one centimetre, which I found it easier to do this way, first of all, and then just flip your card around and then come in at five and a half centimetres, ten centimetres, and fourteen and a half centimetres. You'll need your full arm out here because you want to go further and then score at nineteen centimetres and twenty-four centimetres. You'll see that these two panels might not see it on here, there we go, just about see it. These two panels are slightly wider, so you want to keep those at the top and turn it portrait into your, place it into your trimmer and then put it on the four and a half centimetre mark, make sure it's straight all the way down. Bring up your trimmer blade and this is going to cut down to the second score line. So if you just take it down and stop and then lift it and then pull the blade down to the bottom because you're then going to take your scoring blade and score all the way to the bottom. You then need to move the card over to 9 centimetres. Again pull both the blades back up to the top, the blade and the scoring blade and again cut down to the second scoring line, lift it and take it to the bottom and then score all the way down. Then if you just take it out and using a pair of scissors cut off these two panels here at the second score line. So you end up with a thin piece at the top and uh, the four, pan four panels that are the same size and a little one centimetre panel. Place it back onto the trimmer in the portrait position and using this edge, the widest edge here, place this on two and a half centimetres. Make sure you get it straight. And then if you take your blades up to the top, you then want to bring your cutting blade down to the first score line on the widest part of the cardstock that's remaining. And just very carefully cut it down to the second score line, lift it, move it to the third score line, and then cut all the way to the bottom. Then if you turn it around, do the same on the other side at two and a half centimetres. So if you bring the blade back this way this time, first of all you're going to put it onto moving from the bottom upwards on the bottom score line up to the second score line. Then lift it, place it on the third score line and cut all the way to the end. So you should have two cuts here and two cuts here. And if you turn it, you'll find it much easier to cut the pieces out that you don't need anymore. And you're going to cut all the way in to the first score line, like so, and this one as well. And then just take out these little corners, just a little bit, so that when it all folds, it folds much more neatly. And this one, 
needs to come off there. And again, cut into the score line, take out the corner. And this time you can take out the corner. If you turn it around, you can also trim it at the bottom there. You don't need any of these pieces, so just discard those. Then this side, if you trim, if you work around it like so, um, cut this little tab here, and then cut all the way up this score line here to the to the score line that's going across, and again here. You can remove those pieces; you don't need them. And if you take off little triangles there and there, again for making it neater when you come to fold it all together. Move on to the next one, up to the score line and cut up to the score line. One triangle, two triangles. Again, removing all these pieces to the side where you don't need them. So you should end up with a shape like this. Now the next thing is to pop in the window which comes in this second square here and I used the stitch framelits that Stamping Up do, the smallest circle, it just fits in there nicely but if you don't have um, either the stitch framelits or another circle die you can use uh, your trimmer and cut a window out of it and just cut a square. So I cut that and then on the back of it um, added a piece of vellum to cover the window. So if I just show you, you'll see this is where I cut it out. On the right side, so this is going to be the outside of my box. So if I flip it over, then I've obviously got the circle that I took out that I can use on another project and a piece of vellum that I've cut at four centimeters square to cover the hole. I'm going to use some glue dots one just popped in each corner. If you push the vellum onto the dots then twist it off you'll find that they come off much easier. So you can see them on each corner and that then fits over the circle hole that I've cut and it just frosts the window and seals it in for if you want the tea light and it also if you put chocolate treats in hides the treat. Okay the next job is to put some tear tape, adhesive tape up on the top. This is on the inside just a piece of that. I prefer to cut it sometimes it leaves it neater. Um, if you give it a rub to release it and then flip up the edge with your nail and bend this first score line and make sure that lays down nice and flat. And that's there. So we've now got a slightly smaller piece to be working with. We take the trimmer out of the way as well. So now I'm going to um, fold my score lines to start getting ready to build the box and put it together. and also to decorate it. These all come in. You can see how it will come together now, basically. If you put these two small ones in on the inside, those on the those come round to shadow them. And then I like to fold things backwards so that from the front you don't see any joins. And that just comes on the outside. And then that will slot in there like so. Okay, so what you have to do is put on some tear tape. So I found this easier if you then place the inside of the box down on your work surface and then cut some strips of tape, double sided tape. Just make sure I'm getting the right ends, yes. So cut them there, there. I'm doing this very quickly. You'll probably want to add a little bit more. It's just to show you this 
parts that need the tear tape and then these two flaps here need some as well. So nice and quickly. Give them all a good rub to help release it. Take the, them off. We peel all of those off and then we can turn it back over if we bring those in and if you place it flat on your work surface and make sure that the, this bottom edge here goes along on the work surface you should then get create a nice square a nice cube so if we turn this one around oops I've caught that one just peel it away gently That starts making it nice and square, and then it comes up that with this one overlapping from the front. And again, just make sure you've got it all square, and with the final one there. Okay, so there's your box, and the lid then just pops inside with the two flaps on either side. You don't want to push it too far because it will disappear like like that one. Now I've pushed that in too far, so I'm going to just catch it with my nail. And in case that happens again, so I don't have to stick my fingernail in and damage it all the time, I've used the bow punch, bow builder punch, and you need these pieces. So two of those, two of those, and one, one belly band. And the piece of card that you cut off originally on your piece of A4, you can use it so you don't waste any card to punch them out. Now if you haven't made one of these bows before, you just have to, because I've used the thick white card, I need to just soften it a little bit. So if you just take your bone folder um, and break the fibres down just to soften it so it curls a little better. And we take some glue dots, one on each side like so, to these make the, the nice full bow sides, whatever you want to call them. And one on the bottom there, and that just allows me to pop those two together. And with these ones they just extend the bow and you can put them down at the bottom um, but I found for this it actually works better if you put them on the side so on there this last one where would we be in life without glue dots eh? These are just fab. They're great with kids as well because they're not messy. Um, and again, with the bone folder, just break down that centre belly band around it. And I like to put um, a couple on this, one in the middle and one at one end. Um, so the middle one goes over the bow, the centre of the bow. And if you bring this piece without one on around to the back, squeeze it down, and the other one, the glue dot, will hold. then hold it. Okay. Then to adhere it to the box lid, if we just pop it in so we know where it's going. Again, remember, try not to push it too hard, which I've managed to do yet again. And just one in the middle and one on either side and you want it on this sort of um, curved piece here because that's the bit that's actually going to touch the box and you pop that on the top there and that allows you to lift the lid and open it up without too much problem. I've then used uh, the fabulous Carols of Christmas stamp set because I took these holly um, leaves and berries and then used the die, dinky little die to cut them out 
which I've obviously left on my um, big shot. But these are great and I'll just show you very quickly how to do it because if you take two marker pens with your stamp, I've got a clear block here. Um, if you use the thick end of your brush marker and you know it, it's which end it is because there's a wider white stripe and just very carefully colour it with your green pen for the holly leaves. And then if you take the red one and you can colour the berries and then just stamp those and you get both red and green. So you've got your holly. Okay. Then as I said, I cut them out with a die. So I've got some that I prepared earlier in good blue peter fashion. You can pop one on the bow. And one on each corner. And these I'm putting on with the mini uh, Stampin' Dimensionals, which are great because they're just, they're exactly what it says on the tin, they're mini. And they just fit on to the back of these dinky little pieces like this without showing. And if we have one here as well, then our box is almost finished. The finishing touch is to put a number and um, I'll show you all of mine in a moment but I, this is number two on a second set that I've done and again I've stuck these on with glue dots you want to make sure that you put plenty on so that it doesn't when the box is closing it doesn't catch too much here so stick it well down well you could also use fast fuse and I'm also going to just fold one of these with a point of the scissors fold one in half and add that on this little tail up here. Oops. And one in the middle. And if you lay your box down, you know where the lid goes, you can see. And these just these are the um, large letter dies and and they just fit perfectly on there. Onto that and one final piece of holly pops on there. So you'll end up, when you've done a whole set, hopefully, you've got two twos, two, three, four, and my original number one. And of course, you don't have to put tea lights in, you could put treats, um, and you could put something else on the window if you wanted to. Thanks for stopping by today.